Okay, even though that we could probably spend a year on each one of these Yud Gimel Ikrim of the 13 principles of faith, but we have to be faithful to the Shir as well, and we have to, the goal is to see, to see all of them. So after three or four classes on the first principle, we're going to go to the second principle today. And the, the Rambam writes, Ani ma'amin be'emunah shalema. I believe be'emunah shalema with complete faith. Shahabayra yizbarach shamay, that Hashem, the Blessed One, is He, who yachid ve'en yechidus kamohu b'shum ponim. Hashem is a yachid, He is unique. And there is nothing as unique as HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In the entire world, you will not find anything that is unique like Hashem. And Hashem Himself is our God. I mean, this most unique and individual being, He is the one that is Elokeinu, our God. He is the one that was, He is, and He always will be. And this is the way that we say it over in the Siddur <clears throat> after our davening in the morning. It's talking about this unique nature of Hashem, and we're saying that we are blessed that He is Elokeinu, He is our God, and therefore we are a nation that is privy to this tremendous uniqueness. And what is it that is so, so special about Him? And that is that Ha He was, He is, and He always will be, which means that he, he spans beyond what anybody in the human form or shape could possibly do. We are one-dimensional. We live in this world. We live in the here and the now. We see what's in front of us. We can see a little bit what's behind us. We can see a little bit out beyond our, beyond our boundaries. But only HaKadosh Baruch can see everything that was, that is, that always will be, really as we're going to learn at all times. <coughs> However... However, find that, so th- again, so these are the words <coughs> that we have it in the Siddur. When the Rambam himself, in his work, that we said all of this is based upon, when the Rambam goes through this idea of the second principle of faith, he says over the following words, Yichud Hashem Yizbarach, we are describing the Yichud, which again, in English, they're describing it as uniqueness, but we're going to learn over here that it's much more than just being unique, as he writes. Klema shena'amin, we believe, shezeshu sibas hakol echad. This, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the, is the cause of everything that is happening in the world, is echad, he's, it's all one. We're learning over here in this particular principle of faith, of something called Yichud Hashem Yizbarach, which is going to be teaching us that Hashem Elohim is one. He's only one and nothing else. The Eino Echad Azug Echad Amin. He's not, he doesn't have a partner, he doesn't have anything else that goes along with him. He's not like a person who even though one person is one thing, but he's got so many different parts about him, he's broken up into all different pieces. Like our body is one. Even though that the body is one, but there's, again, there's so many different parts inside the body, and there's veins, and there's blood, and there's bones, and there's all the different things that are working together in order to make this body run. Even the body itself is not really one. There's too many different elements that are there. Hashem Yizbarach Echad Ba'achdus. But Hashem is one ba'achdus in unity. Shein kamaisa achdus, and there is no oneness, there is no unity in the entire universe like Hashem. V'zeh yisoyed hasheni, mar alav ma'ashenemar, and this second concept, this second principle of faith that we have, is based upon the words that we say every single day, Shema Yisrael Hashem alokeinu, Listen, O Israel, Hashem, our God, Hashem Echad. What makes Hashem so unique over everything else that's in the world? And that is that only HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Echad, only Hashem is one. Nothing else in the world can claim total unity and total autonomy and complete, uh, complete 
oneness and uniqueness, only Hashem, as we're going to learn, is the one that is able to claim that He is Echad, that He is one. <coughs> so the so Rav, Rav uh, Epstein writes over here in his safe for the following idea. This foundation of which all of our amuna, all of our faith is based upon, who Yisoyed Yichud Hashem is based upon the idea that a person agrees in their mind. They come, whether it's going to be intellectually, <clears throat> whether it's going to be what they see in this world to understand on a spiritual, emotional level, but wh- however it is that a person is going to come to this, they must know that Hashem is Yichud what we call Yichud Hashem, which means the unity of Hashem. If you're not going to believe that Hashem is one, and that everything, as we're going to see, that's happening in this world is just an expression of Hashem's oneness, even when we will see things that are going on in this world that seem to be contradictory to what we would think is the unity of Hashem, even when things are going to go on in our own lives, that we wonder to ourselves, How could HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the same God that gave me this bracha just last week, how could the same God do this this week? I don't understand. If a person doesn't believe in Yichon Hashem, in the oneness, the unity, the unique essence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that He is bound together by one, so then this world is going to become a very confusing place. Life itself is going to get to a point where it just, doesn't make any sense because there are too many things coming and going and moving around in our lives. There's too many events that are pulled, stretched apart on opposite ends of the spectrum. And a person will begin to ask, well, where is Hashem? How does Hashem do that? As, as the famous, famous question that we have from the days of the Holocaust, if Hashem is so kind and Hashem is so loving, And Hashem is so merciful. And Hashem cares so much about the Jewish people. So where was Hashem? That's a question, not that we shouldn't answer that question, and not that we shouldn't try to understand what was going on over there. But when a person lives a life of Yichud Hashem, where they know that everything that takes place in this world is being driven by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and Hashem is one, which means that there's no contradiction. <clears throat> we can't understand this because we live in our minds, we live in contradiction and probably hypocrisy all of the time. In the morning we wake up, we think one thing. By the time that we finish breakfast, we're thinking something else. And whatever is on our phone makes us think about something else. And whatever the president said in his State of the Union address last, the, the other night, but then we think about something else. And in, in the afternoon, I'm ready to live for my principles like this. But by nighttime already, something happened. I'm in a bad mood, so now I'm not going to follow those principles of however I want to live my life. A person is rapidly changing his opinion, his emotions, his outlook on life all of the time, and therefore we are, <clears throat> we are not one. We have all these many, many things that are going on inside of us. But Hashem is not like that. He's not swayed by popular opinion. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't change his mind just because he's 3,500 years after the Torah was given at Mount Sinai and it seems to be antiquated and old and maybe it doesn't apply to everybody in the world today. No, Hashem says, I created the world and I created the Torah before the world and the Torah is here is in this world and that's the way as we learned in Tehillim on Sunday that's the way that a Jew is going to be able to live their life so Hashem is the only being in the entire universe from the very beginning of time until the end of time and beyond that is one and therefore he writes the entire foundation of all of our amuna, if you really want to believe in Hashem <clears throat> and see Hashem in the things that are going to be going on around you, then you must have amun shlema, be yichud Hashem, that Hashem is really one. And he writes, <clears throat> and he says, don't think it's like a, a, a numbers game over here. Yeah, the, the constellations, there's 12 whatever constellations in the sky. And there's a thousand rivers in the world. And there's 50, 100 different species of birds. But Hashem, there's only one Hashem. 
So it's like a numbers game over here. For every, every, every other thing that there is in the world, we can always find multiples, and we'll find more, and we'll find different types. But Hashem, He just happens to be one. It's much more, He writes, than a numerical game over here. Ela Echad, Meireh, Al Achtus Gemara. The fact that Hashem is one, it is Meireh, it teaches us, it shows us that there is an Achtus, a complete and a total unity that exists in Hashem. Ein Oid Milvado, there is nothing else Milvado besides Hashem. Ein Oid Milvado, what do those words mean? There is nothing else besides Hashem. Hainushain Oid Bimitsius Shu Mitsius. There is nothing else in the reality of this world, Kayemis Chutz Mimena, that exists outside of Hashem. These are very deep concepts. We'll try to explain them in the best way that we can. And that is that a person who wants to come to the Amunah that HaKadosh Baruch is one, and that Hashem is running the world with that unity, you must believe Ein Oid Milvado, there is nothing else besides Hashem. Which means... The world itself that we are living in only exists because HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one that is making it exist. You are only alive because if you are attached to the mitzvahs, to the essence of Hashem, and Ein Oid Milvado, there is nothing else besides Hashem in this world, therefore you, have a, you, are a, you are connected to the unity, to the oneness, to the uniqueness of Hashem, and therefore you're going to be able to live. Ein Oid Movado means I recognize that whatever is going on in the world, it's only because Hashem is willing that it should take place. I, it looks like a contradiction. I, it doesn't make sense to me. I turn on the news every single day. It's probably better not to turn on the news every single day. You turn on the news every single day. It's a world of chaos. Ein Oid Movado, there's nothing else besides Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the only true reality that there is, is in the world, and nothing could exist without Hashem. Just like if you take and you buy a beautiful new lamp from the store, and you bring it home and you crawl into bed at night and you can't wait to read your favorite book by the light of that lamp, and you click the button, and the lamp doesn't turn on. You click the button again, and the lamp doesn't turn on. So you get angry, going out of business sale, that light store is always going out of business, and you bought the lamp right now, and it doesn't work. So you look inside, and you screw down the light bulb, try it again, it doesn't work. You don't understand, what's going on over here? Then you look, and you see that you never plugged it in to the wall. <laughs> if the plug is not connected to the electricity that is in your house, then no matter if you have the best, most expensive, most state-of-the-art lamp with the best kind of light bulb that you possibly could have, it is not going to work because electricity runs the world of lights. So too, we're saying over here that when we say that Ein Oid Novado, there is nothing else in this world besides Hashem, which means the only true mitzis, the only true reality is HaKadosh Baruch the only force of the world is Hashem, the only power of the world is Hashem. Everybody else is just like a light fixture that must be plugged in to the source of where all of that life is coming from. And therefore, if a person is alive, whether they are aware of it or they're not aware of it, to some extent you are plugged in to this mitzis, to this reality. To some extent, you are connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to His world, because the world does not exist, except that the fact that Hashem Himself is the one that is causing it and creating it and making it exist the way that it does. So at the beginning, He's saying over here of our foundation of Amuna, that without this, a person is not really going to be able to believe is, you must believe in the concept that Ein Oid Novadai Hashem is one and the only being in the world that is one and the whole universe itself rides on this uniqueness and this unity of Hashem as we're going to see. He says, Kim echad mamish acher Hashem is literally one and there's nothing else in the world besides Hashem. 
Right? We'll have to explain what that means. If Hashem for one moment would decide to turn away from this world, just for a split second, HaKadosh Baruch would say, I, I just, I got to step out for a moment, I have a meeting, and He would turn His face, a turn away from this world, Safu Vitamo, the world would cease to exist. Vayu as if it was never even here before. Vizamitas Kavaida Yisbarach Shemo, that is the true cover, the true honor, the true essence of Hashem. Again, it means HaKadosh Baruch Hu is everything. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one that is running this world. The world itself only exists because it is completely connected to Hashem. And if Hashem for one moment would decide He's turning away from this world, that means the, the thing that is holding all of this entire breed, this creation together, the world would fall apart and it would slip back into oblivion. There would be nothing over here. Which means that even though that we live in a world where there are so many different parts of this creation, you have water, you have fire, you have the sky, you have the earth, you have birds that fly, you have animals that walk on the ground, you have fish that swim in the sea, you have cold, you have warm, you have hot, you have arid, you have moist, you have dry, you have all different things that are in this world. And so they all look very, very different. But nevertheless, since that HaKadosh Baruch is the one that is running this world, and Hashem Himself is one, and the universe is how Hashem expresses Himself to mankind, that means that all of the different parts of the world are merely an expression of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's unity within Himself, so to speak. That means there's nothing that's out of place. That's why at the end of creation, it says that V'yar Lokim, as called Sha'as Hashem saw everything that He made. Yeah, He saw everything that He made, and He said, and it's Taif Ma'id, it's very good. So the Rash, the, Rash, the Rash Bam says over there, what does it mean? Vayar Lukim is called Shaasa. He looked back to see everything that he made. So he says he looked back to see one last time: is everything in place the way that it should be? Does the world have everything that I needed to have in order that I will always be able to push forth or put forth my unity and my oneness to mankind? Is it a world in which a person, if they look hard enough, they'll be able to find who I am? So he saw, and he looked, and he said, the world is absolutely perfect. It is a world that is an expression of my unity, an expression of my power, an expression of my wisdom, an expression of me, says Hashem, and it never will need another thing to be added to this world because it has everything that a person needs to have in order to live a life where I'm going to be at peace, I'm going to be involved in what's going on. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Echad, Hashem is one. And if a person doesn't get to that point of the Echad of the oneness, they're simply going to have a very hard time believing in everything else that we're going to have in the 13 principles of faith. Now he says over here this idea of Ein Oid Milvando, there's nothing else besides Hashem. The Nefesh HaChaim writes, Segula Nifla, he writes a tremendous uh, I, I don't know, we'll call it a, like a, a beacon of light that a person could have. It's like a, a, a treasure that if a person holds on to it in the right way, it will help them through many situations. And that is that whenever a person will find themselves in a difficult situation in life, and they simply don't know how they're going to get out of it, they're just not sure how are they going to get through this, they should think to themselves, Ein Oid Milvadai. They should continue repeating it again and again and again and again. There is nothing in the world besides Hashem, which means that everything that is going on around me, it's all Hashem. It's not this person who's doing it to me. It's not this pain that I'm in. It's not this one who said this. Ein Oid Milvado, there is nothing else besides Hashem. That's the way that Hashem runs the world. And if a person gets in a situation where they start getting nervous that maybe somebody else is running the show, or maybe HaKadosh Baruch doesn't know exactly what he's doing, and things are very difficult for me, says the Nefesh Chaim, control yourself, 
focus your thoughts, and start thinking and saying the words, Ein oid milvando, there's nothing else besides Hashem. And then you will see once again, the unity of Hashem will be there in your life. And things that you thought were not going to change, things that you thought were not going to work out, you'll recognize everything that's happening is Hashem. He'll bring it all together and it will work itself out. When my wife was in labor with our second child, so she was already going for many, many, many hours, and as they were monitoring the baby, so they saw that his heartbeat was dropping. So nobody knows exactly why the heartbeat drops, why it doesn't, but they have their theories. For some reason, they didn't tell us what the theory was. But the doctor said to us at a certain point that if your labor doesn't pick up within the next hour, she said, we have no choice. We're going to have to do a C-section to bring the baby out. The heart rate is dropping. It's okay for the next hour. After that, it's not, we, we can't take any more chances. So we had a, a labor coach who was in the room with us. And the doctor was there, and there were nurses there. And I ever politely asked everyone to please leave my wife and I alone for the next hour, everybody should leave the room. And the labor coach, no, you know, I'm gonna help. I said, it's okay, please just leave the room right now. My wife and I need to spend time alone. And at that point in, in the year, my Rosh Hashiv, Rev. Aaron Feldman, had been giving drushes the last like two or three weeks in, in yeshiva, all about this concept of Ein Oid Movandai. There is nothing else besides Hashem, and if a person realizes that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one that is running the show and it's all Him, things change. Because you bring Hashem back into the situation, things will, take, uh, will turn around. So I told my wife, I said, it's not the doctors. It's not the labor coach with that bouncing ball that's over here. It's not going to be the nurses who are going to give you encouragement. I said, the only one that is going to carry us through the next hour that your labor should speed up and we should have a healthy baby is Eino Milvadu Hashem. So I told my wife, let's just keep saying over and over and over again, Eino Milvadu, Eino Milvadu. We spent the next hour in that room just repeating the words, Ein Oyed Milvadu, there's nothing else besides Hashem, there's nothing else besides Hashem. It was very holy moments in our lives. The prayers that we were going through at were on a different level. One hour, the doctor comes in to the room, and she says, okay, let's see. She's already preparing for the C-section because she checks my wife, and she says, wow, I don't believe it. You just went like from five to eight and a half in one, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. She calls in the nurses, Everything is moving along. My wife is now screaming out other words from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is, Hashem hu Elohim, Hashem is, the, is, the, is God. And we're davening and davening and davening. And before she knows it, she's ready to bring the baby into this world. Unbeknownst to us, suddenly there's like a crew of like seven other doctors or whatever in the room, all in these, in these yellow garments and everything, the, the emergency team. We had no idea what's going on. We were so involved in the world of Eino Nevada, we didn't even pay attention. Finally, the baby is born, and we don't hear the cry right away. And they pull the baby out. What happened was, why his heartbeat was going on, is because the cord was wrapped all the way around his neck. Quickly, the doctor unwraps, gives a little punch, and then we hear the cry of the baby. And everything is fine. No emergencies, no C-section. These, all these seven men in their yellow suits didn't touch our child, nothing. Everything was fine. At the end, my wife and I were in such awe of Hashem. How He runs the world, how He's right there, how He is one. He can be in the most difficult moments where you think it's never going to change. Hashem changes everything. The doctor was a Jewish lady. She was not religious. She comes in after, whatever, an hour or so, after we have the babies cleaned up and we're resting there in the room. She walks in and she looks at us and she says, Someone up there must really like you. But if you really like him, then he's really going to show favor upon you as well. 
And if we are the ones that will bring this unity, we'll understand that HaKadosh Baruch is one, and the Ein Ay, there is nothing else besides Him, we are going to be able to go very far in our world of Amunah. So, uh, there, again, there is so much that we can say over here, but I want to go to this concept which we are discussing, of how does a person reconcile HaKadosh Baruch Hu's achdus, his unity, where everything we're saying is under his jurisdiction, everything is according to his will, everything runs itself the way that he wants it to, and yet, so many times we see that it just doesn't work out like that. So many times we see things that seem to be the greatest contradiction to the way in which we understand who Hashem is. Is Hashem a cruel God? Well, He looks like it sometimes. Is HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgetful of who we are? It looks like it sometimes. <clears throat> Does HaKadosh Baruch Hu torture people because He has nothing better to do? Why does this person deserve to be tortured? Well, it looks like it sometimes like that. So there's a famous sefer called Das Tavunis, written by the Ramchal. And the Ramchal addresses this question. And this particular sefer that he has is, is one of a very philosophical work of being able to describe and understand how Hashem runs this world. And he says over the following, When we say that Hashem is one, it's not enough for us to believe or to know that Hashem's mitzius, that His essence, is one. That's not enough. We have to understand. We have to understand even more than that. When we say that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's mitzius, His essence, is one, it's beyond all of that. And that is... There is no ruler, and there is no one that is guiding this world besides Hashem. There's nothing that can hold Hashem back from doing what He wants to do. There's nothing that is going to prevent His will from being uh, expressed here in this world. And His complete and his unique one rulership that he has over this world, fine. And you have to know, Hashem rules over everything in this world. Hashem himself is the one who created the good and the bad. Bad is a creation that Hashem brought into this world for a purpose, for a reason. What does it say in the beginning of creation when it says at the end of the entire creation, Hashem said, Taiv ma'ayr, it is very good. What is the very good? Every other day was Taiv, it was good. Suddenly the last day is very good. And the Midrash writes over there, what, what was very good? Hashem created the Yetzirah on that day. The Yetzirah, the evil inclination that resides inside each and every one of us, that was very good. The last, day. the last day. Why was that very good? Because if you would not have the challenges in life, if you would not have the tests that a person has to overcome, if you would not have things that seem to be confusing and your job is to make clarity out of it, then a person would never ever be able to grow in this world. We would never accomplish our mission in this world if we came into this world and everything was perfectly clear what we're supposed to do. So Hashem said, I want to elevate you. I want to give you reward. I want to make your life more, re more, satis more satisfying and meaningful. How do I do that? I'm going to put Ra into this world. I'll put bad into this world. And the bad will be your challenge that you will have to overcome. The person begins to exercise. So... They start with, with whatever it is, the Stairmaster. So if they didn't exercise for 5, 10, 20 years, whatever it is, they know when they get on the Stairmaster, it's not going to go so easy. It's going to be after a few seconds maybe. They're already huffing and puffing and they're out of breath. So that's a challenge. But what happens? The next day you do another minute. And after that, another minute. Before you know it, a few months down the road, you get on there and you are just pumping away and you are going like it's like... 
easy as could be. You got to the next level. Now you want to get to the next level, you do an incline, you make it a little steeper, you make it a little harder, you'll keep moving up. That's the way that a person grows in this world. That's the way that a person goes to the next level is when they have to push themselves. The Ra, the bad, quote unquote, that Hashem has placed into this world. Remember, Hashem there has no bad. There's no such thing as bad in Hashem's, from Hashem. And everything that Hashem created is from Him. So if Hashem is the source of all good, and He's the source of all kindness, and the source of all mercy, and Hashem doesn't have a trace, one ounce of bad inside of Him, so what does it mean that there's bad then? It means that HaKadosh Baruch Hu uses that which looks like it's bad in our eyes to help us along to come to the next level. Because if we would not have that challenge or that or that test in our lives, you never ever would grow. It would be like staying on the Stairmaster, huffing and puffing after five seconds and getting off every single time. You'll never get healthy, you'll never be in shape, you'll never get to the next level. Says the Ramchal, <clears throat> you should know, <laughs> Hashem Himself is the one who created the good and the bad. It's not two separate entities, it's all the same. The who shayfed kol arts, he rules over the entire world. The geyser kol ashe yaseb el yonim tachtainim, he is decreeing constantly everything that will take place in the heavenly worlds and everything that takes place down here in this world as well. Whatever you see is on the news. Whatever tragic story you have heard, whatever good story you have heard, whatever nice thing you, you know about, whatever goodness in your own life, it's all Hashem, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything in between. It's all the Rebbe Nishalem. Ve'ein lai shum hechrech ukefir. And you have to know there is nothing at all that is forcing Hashem to do what He does. Everything that Hashem does, He has decided that this is the ultimate good that must be reckoned here in this world. And this is also one of the reasons that we say that if a person wants to understand what it means to be a tzelem elokim, to be created in the image of God, that means that just like Hashem is the one that is beicha akol, He chooses everything, and nothing in reality is forcing Him to do a thing, He does it all on His own. If you want to exercise your tzelem elokim, your godly image, you have to know also that you have the ability to choose whatever you want, and as as the, the Rambam and the Ramban and many others write, nothing is forcing you in any direction to do the things that you do. That's our godliness. Our godliness is that we are also in control. We are in control of our actions. We are in control of our thoughts. We are in control of our words. We are in control of the things that we do with ourselves through our own bechir, our own free will. Says the Ramchal, you should know what does it mean, the unity of Hashem? Unity means that He does everything. He runs the entire universe above and below. And nothing ever could sway HaKadosh Baruch Hu or push Hashem from doing something that He doesn't want to do. The Kol Sidri Ad Mishpat Van Haga Kulam Tuluyim Biratsayinu And all of the ways of Mishpat, of justice, that we find in this world, and Han Haga, the way in which He, he runs and conducts this world, Kulam Tiliyim Beratzanu, everything depends on his ratzan, on his will. Everything, says the Ramchal. There's nothing that is happening in this world. Good, bad, the decrees, the way the world is moving and running, the way that Hashem interacts in this world, there's nothing that takes place except because of the ratzan, the will of Hashem. Keshu Reitzer, now this is this fascinating idea that he writes. Keshu writes that when Hashem wants to, because everything is based upon His ruts and what He wants, Keshu writes that when Hashem wants to, He can do the following. It's as if He is Meshabed, He subjugates His own will, Lemaise b'nei Adam, to the acts of man, Shem Yanhigu Habriya Lefi Maisehem, they will run the world based upon their actions. Says the Ramchal, uh, a very deep idea over here, and this goes back to other things that we've learned over the years, that a person should know that the result of their actions 
triggers in the, in the spiritual world tremendous things, and the world runs in a different way based upon what you do. Like we say, that if a person does good and a person elevates himself, he can elevate the entire world along with him. If a person is mechalkil, they destroy themselves and they hurt themselves, they can bring the whole world down together with them. When you say a word of prayer over here, you don't know how far it's traveling in the universe and maybe it's going and it's saving somebody else a, a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand miles away. You have no idea. But Hashem knows. Hashem knows that which you do helps Him to run this world. When Hashem wants to, when He wants to, He can completely, quote-unquote, subjugate Himself to the actions of man. And He says, since that I created a world of Bechir of free will, and I created a world in which man is the Tselem Elohim. And Tselem Elohim means that based upon the decisions that he makes, he's going to have an effect on the universe, just like I'm Elohim, I'm God, and I'm the Balakaychus Kulam, I run the entire world. When I created man, I invested that energy and that power inside of him, says Hashem, so I'll like stand back, and this person over here is going to do this action, I'm now going to allow that action to create whatever reaction there's going to be in this world. Hashem can do that, and that's not a steer, that is not a contradiction to the fact that Hashem is Eidol Nevada, there's nothing else besides Hashem. Because Hashem set up the world in that way, that's how He wants it to run. However, at the same time, Kshuroitze, but when Hashem wants to, He doesn't pay attention to the deeds of man, and he will give good to a person whenever it is that he wants to. Even though, you look at the stories we have in the Chumash right now, the Jewish people, 49th level of tomb of impurity. It's almost as bad as living in Los Angeles, California. They were as low as you could get. And Hashem, He turned the entire world upside down for the sake of Klal Yisrael. He destroyed the Egyptians he reinforced Amuna into the hearts and the souls of the Jewish people. He saved them from our enemies. He brought us in this week's Parsha to the Kriyas Yamsu, the splitting of the sea. Did we deserve it? We're so, such a worthy nation. 200 years of slavery, 200 years of assimilation, 200 years of idol worship, 200 years of forgetting about Hashem. Do we deserve it? We don't deserve it. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu can say, I don't care whether or not you deserve it. I need this to take place right now. That's the only way that the world is going to come to fruition when Klal Yisrael will have the ge'ula, the redemption from the land of Egypt. And that redemption will lead to standing by Harsinai and standing by Harsinai will lead to the receiving the Torah. And once that Klal Yisrael has the Torah, that's it. History takes a different course in life. Yes? I have a question. <clears throat> so isn't there a stira in no, I understand. Hashem will hug the Yachid. Ken. And you said that He, he really did, uh, uh, creates everything, and I understand that and I believe in that. But you also, uh, Hashem also uh, gave uh, people uh, uh, the, the, the right or the privilege of choosing. Yes. So what good is choosing? And deciding to do something a certain way because we, we, we stand before great decisions every single minute of our life. Not great, small, for whatever it is. So what's gonna happen to the way we decide it? The, I don't I don't it doesn't correlate for me yet. <laughs> okay. So th this I mean the, the way that we are the way that we are describing it is is that you should know that the decisions that you make in your life. Now, I just, just to, to clarify, what's a decision that counts and what's a decision that matters? Meaning, when you sit down at the breakfast table and you have raisin bran and cornflakes <laughs> and you decide that you'd like to feel the chewiness of the raisin in your teeth today and you choose the raisin bran, that's not a great decision. That's just, that's just we'll call it instinct of what you want to do. When you have things in your life that you have become accustomed to doing on a daily basis and you are habituated to doing those things and you do it anyway, also not a decision. It's just that's the way that life runs. When you are confronted, as you would say, with these great decisions in front of you where there really is a challenge and you're not sure which, which side to choose 
when you have all these forces inside of you that are the stirot, that are the contradictory. One is telling you, yeah, it's good for you. The other one is saying, no, 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 that's a terrible thing. Don't do that. One is saying, yes, go here. The other one is saying, no, 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 you're better than that. Don't go there. When you have those challenges in life, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, that's exactly why I created you. Because when you will use your free will in those situations, and you will make the right choice, and you will make the proper decision, that's how you are going to achieve greater spiritual heights in your life. I've given you that because I want you to have an opportunity, says Hashem, to become better today than you were yesterday. And tomorrow you will be better than you were today. But that's only if I made a world which allows you to have that gift of Bechira, of free choice. If there would be no free choice, says Hashem, what a boring life you're going to have. However I made you, whoever you are, with the good and the, and the faults, the positive traits and the negative traits, there's no way you can never change any of that. Hashem made a world in which man is different than every other creature. The dog will never change. He ate Alpo last week, he's going to eat it again this week. He ran away from his owner at the park and he bit a cat, he'll do the same thing next week as well. He doesn't have moral dilemmas, should I bite the cat, should I not bite the cat? He doesn't think like that. Only man was given the choice of free will to make himself who he's going to be. Man is an unfinished product. The rest of the animal kingdom, finished products. There's thousands of different types of fish in the sea. They're all a finished product. There's hundreds of thousands of species in the world. They're all finished products. They're never going to change. Man comes into this world an unfinished product. And Hashem says, your job is complete yourself. How are you going to do that? Only one way, Bechir, free choice. Utilize the challenges that are there in front of you and elevate yourself, make yourself into a better person. So the Ramchal is saying over here, that's also part of the achdus of the unity of Hashem. Because since that Hashem wants a creature named man, and specifically Klal Yisrael, the Jewish people, that are going to keep rising up and up and up and up and becoming partners in Hashem with His world, and the way that the world will run, will run hopefully for better, so He had to make it in such a way that He could step back, so to speak, and allow man to either make the right choice, or, God forbid, to make the wrong choice. What's going to be the result? Hashem says, I will react to your, to your decisions. If you do good, I can lift you up and the entire world around you. If you do bad, so then I can hurt you and the whole world around you is going to be hurting as well. And so that's the way in which Hashem created this world in order to facilitate for man to reach the highest levels possible. But at, at the same time he writes that if HaKadosh Baruch Hu this wills it, he will not pay attention, so to speak, to the actions of mankind at all. Which means that even when, like we're saying from the story of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim, even when you don't deserve to be freed, you don't deserve all the miracles I'm going to make over you, we don't get miracles. Why? Because we don't deserve the miracles. Klal Yisrael didn't really deserve all the miracles back then, 49th level of impurity. They had been living in an abyss of assimilation for 200 years. But Hashem said, I need to do it right now. I'm going to overlook ex the position that you're holding in the spiritual world. I'll overlook what you're holding here in this world because I need to get the world moving closer to the ultimate goal, which is I form a nation. Their name is Klal Yisrael. They stand by Mount Sinai on the sixth day of Sivan and they receive the Torah. I, you don't deserve it. You were just doing horrible things just last night, but I, I need to do this as Hashem. So Hashem can suspend the, what we would call the nature of this world in order for Him to be able to mitigate and to bring about the things that He wants to for the betterment of mankind and the ultimate goals of history, which is going to eventually bring Mashiach. Commotion Nemo, like it says, Hashem says, I will, find, I will have favor on those that I want to have favor on. Even if they don't deserve it. That's what Hashem says I'm allowed to do. I'm, I'm Hashem. I can do anything I want. I can, I can build. I can give blessing. I can make things good. I could curse. I could destroy. I can make things miserable for a person. 
I, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in my infinite wisdom, in my omniscience and my, and my omnipotence, I am able to decide based on my rots and my will what is right now and what is right in five minutes and two years and 12 years down the road. And every decision, like we said, He was, He is, He always will be. Our sages tell us that means that Hashem is watching the world constantly. While we are sitting here in this room and we are learning together about, the, about these Yud Gimel Ikrim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is watching the Rambam writing the Yud, Yud Gimel Ikrim. You understand? He's watching a thousand years ago the Rambam sitting there with his quill pen and he's writing down this very deep commentary. And a thousand years later in Encino, California, we're learning the words of the Rambam. And he's also watching that in a hundred years, whenever it will be, there's going to be a Mashiach that's going to come, and all of the Yud Gimel Ikrim are going to become obvious to each and every single one of us. Hashem sees it all, all of the time. And therefore, says Hashem, I can do whatever I want, because no other being is as one, is as unified as I am. The entire universe is based upon my Ratzon, my ultimate will. So he goes on and he writes the following. Now, and this is really our question. Even though when you look at the world, if you'd be a CNN reporter, and you would look at the nature of the world, it would look like there's two different godly entities that are running this world. One of them does good, one of them does bad. How can you explain the same God does bad and good? What does that mean? And sometimes we see nations that rise up against Klal Yisrael, or they, or they create terrible things in the world, and they seem to, 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 to destroy and to minimize HaKadosh Baruch Hu's ability to run the world in a positive, in a forward momentum type of a place. When Klal Yisrael goes into the Gullahs into exile, which means the nations rise up against us and they are killing us and destroying us and running around with anti-Semitism spewing forth. So it doesn't make Hashem look very good. It makes it look like we're a weak nation and our Kodesh Baruch can defend us. Right? The Gemara says that Moshe Rabbeinu, one of his arguments to Hashem when he wanted to destroy the Jewish people after the Chet Egel, the sin of the golden calf, Hashem said, I'm ready, I'm getting rid of these people. They blew it. I gave them the Torah. It says, believe in God and don't bow down to idols. And 40 days later, they're dancing around an idol that they made with their own hands. I have to get rid of them. So Moshe Ben said, Hashem, but if you do that, what will the people of the world say? What are they going to say? They're going to say, you cannot save your nation. So Hashem says, yes, they will, because they saw that I saved them by the hands of Paro in Mitzrayim. I did save them. So they'll say, yes, you saved them. When it was against, when it was from the hands of Paro, but when it came to this catastrophe of the Jewish people, what they did, on that you weren't able to save them from the, from the destruction of the world. So Hashem said, you know what, that's a very good point, Moshe. Okay, I'm not going to destroy them. Which means that it's, it's clear that a Baruch Hu's glory is diminished when the Jewish people are suffering, when we are under the oppression of the nations of the world, when we are locked into the exile, when there's anti-Semitism. So, how could Hashem be running the world? Why would He do that to Himself? You don't make yourself look bad. If a person is, is going for a job interview, they don't write about all the jobs they lost in the last 20 years. You only put in the things where you were successful. You never put on your resume a person that hates you. You only put on your resume people that like you and will praise you and say all the nice things. Why would HaKadosh Baruch Hu, He runs the world and everything is according to His will, why would He do things that make him look bad. Why would he do that? Says the Ramchal. And he says, Ushemay mischal begoyim. His name is desecrated amongst the nations. Beshlit is HaRashoyim, his God was around when the Rishoyim, when the wicked people stand up and they rule the world. When they do things that are in the face of morality, in the face of the holiness and the sanctity that Hashem created the world for, what a chil Hashem. What a desecration of Hashem's name because again it looks like Hashem doesn't have control. But He does have control, we're saying, over everything. So listen to these words. Everything from Hashem. Hashem is turning the wheels 
and all the things that are taking place in this world are coming from a very deep place. Through that which looks to you like it's so horrible, and it makes even Hashem look so bad and so weak, you should know that everything is with the intention that it will eventually bring the world to its ultimate shlemus, its ultimate perfection. A person, Rahman al-Zan, is sick, and they go to the doctor, and the doctor runs exams and tests, and he says, I'm really sorry to tell you, this is serious, we have to do a major operation on you, it's going to be painful, it's going to hurt you, we're going to remove this and remove that, the recovery is going to be, I just met somebody yesterday, he told me as a friend, who had some kind of brain surgery, he was, recovery was 155 days in the hospital. 155 days in the hospital is almost half a year. So the doctor says, but I have no choice. If I don't do this, you're going to die. So the person goes through the suffering, he goes through the pain, he goes through the surgery, he goes through the recovery, he goes through the physical therapy, he goes through everything, he has the medications, everything. And 10 months down the road, he's like a new person, he's like a new man. He's healthy, he's strong, he enjoys life, he enjoys his family, his children, his work, he's back at work. Says, says the Ramchal, you should know that when you see things that look bad in your eyes, when you see things that look like Hashem doesn't have power, when you see the world running in such a way where the Jewish people are being blasted by the entire universe for just being a Jew, don't, don't despair. Because you should know that just as the doctor did everything he had to do to make the quality of this person's life better and live for a long time, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Roy Feichelim, who is the, the master healer of the world, he's doing everything in order to bring about the ultimate perfection and completion of this world, of this universe. And therefore, everything that you see that looks in your eyes as bad, it's not bad because it's coming from Hashem. It's just in order to move the world along the way that it has to. Shiyaviru b'nei adam es hara v'yikva People will be able to move past the bad and they'll put their hard work into the good. If you keep in mind that yes, there is, there is negative or bad in this world, but HaKadosh Baruch is sending it your way so you should try to avoid it, so then you'll be able to attach yourself to this ultimate good. When Hashem lifts Himself up and lifts up the world with this this complete Hanhaga, the way that he runs it, this unique Hanhaga of, of Achtos of Unity, then we, it will be revealed to us, meaning when? When Mashiach will come in the end and we'll be able to see the things that we couldn't see in this world, we will understand that all of the Mitzias Hara, all the things that we thought were so bad, it was all coming directly from Hashem, and that's the way that He decided to run this world. For what reason? We're not always privy to see what reason it is right now, but you know what? Everybody in their own life can see situations which they felt were the worst situation that they ever thought they would ever go through in their life. And three years later, if it would not have been for that particular situation, they would not be where they are today. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us a glimpse into the world of Mashiach. He gives us a glimpse into the world of total perfection by recognizing that things that we thought were bad actually end up being the greatest thing in the world for us. Uh, the, the person that has, like Chazal tell us, there's something called a Yerida Letzorech Aliyah. A person goes down in order to come up. Sometimes we go through challenging times in our life, for what reason? So that we can pull ourselves up to a higher level than we were on before. It was it bad what we went through? At the end of the day, it wasn't bad at all. It was actually the best thing that could have happened to us. When a person goes to the gym and they're lifting weights and it hurts, you're straining your muscles. But then, and you're, you're sore and you're achy afterwards. So is lifting weights bad? No, it's challenging you so that your muscles are going to get stronger and healthier and bigger. Says the Ramchal, 
When Hashem's oneness, His unity is revealed, you will then know at the end of all of the gigulim, gigulim is the, the, the happenings of this world, the revelations of this world, all of the neshamas coming and going, coming and going. You know then that Hashem is one of a kind. Hashem is the one that is guiding all of the cause, all of the causes here in this world. To come to the ultimate true purpose, which is the ultimate good, the true good, which is when Hashem's world will become Echad, will become one, when the Sheikh will come and the world will reach its fruition. Says the Ramchal, it's bad? You look into the world and you see, well, how could there be God if He's so cruel? How could there be God? You can see the picture. You can see the bigger picture of life, says the Ramchal, that you understand why Hashem is doing everything He did. Imagine you walked into, the, into a hospital, you peeked into the door of the operating room, and you see a man there, a doctor with a scalpel in his hand, cutting into somebody's head. And you had no idea that he's doing emergency brain surgery to save this person's life. You'd run and say, you're murderer, you're killing this person. No, you don't understand. I'm saving this person's life. He, has, he had just had a trauma to his head from a car accident. And if I don't get in there right now and get rid of the bleeding and put everything down, he's going to die. So you could understand what Hashem is doing? Remember, Hashem is Haya Hoive Vihiya. He's watching the entire universe all at once. That's his achtus, that's his unity. Only HaKadosh Baruch can see that and only Hashem knows that. We are limited. And therefore, when we see things that are bad, your amuna has to kick in and tell you, there's nothing that Hashem does that is bad. Everything that Hashem does is for a reason. Everything that Kodesh Baruch Hu does is to bring the world and even to bring myself to a new place. And I'll just finish off with these words. He brings from the Gemara. The Gemara says, Hashem echad echad. On that day, on that great day when the Sheikh is going to come, Hashem will be one and His name will be one. Shalaasi lavoi. In the future, when you will hear things that are bad. Yes, when there will come the time of perfection in this world. And there will be things that will look like they are bad. You know what bracha we're going to make? Hashem is good and He does good. Why? Because that's exactly what we're saying. Because there is no bad from Hashem. Hashem does not do bad. Everything, even when it looks like it's bad, it's all for the good. Hashem is revealing Himself in that, in that world, in that place, that actually everything is for the good. And there's no negative anything about what He's, what he's involving Himself in. All the things that are taking place in this world, all the events, the hardships, the ups, the downs, everything, even if it looks, and the, and the strengthening of what is raw, is bad in this world, it's all for the benefit of the Jewish people. Remember that. Everything is for the benefit of Klal Yisrael. So even when you see something that is so bad and so hard to understand, how could Hashem do that? It's not bad. Hashem is running the world. And Hashem is doing it with a purpose in mind, and that is, He wants to make your life better. And we'll conclude, he writes, the sages teach us in the Gemara, a person is obligated to make a blessing on the bad, just as he makes a blessing on those things that are good. Right? We make a bracha at a levai, at a funeral, baruch dayin ha'emes. Why are you making a bracha on that? It's a sad, it's a tragedy. Why are you making a bracha? Because you accept upon yourself that everything Hashem does, He's the true judge. He knows everything. He would not have done what He had done unless it was the right thing to do. Ah, it's painful? Of course it's painful. It's a loss? Of course it's a loss. But trusting in Hashem knows that just like every other thing in the world is under His jurisdiction, even those things would seem to be bad, that's also. And therefore he concludes, A person should accustom themselves to saying the following phrase constantly. 
everything that Hashem, the merciful one, does, letav avid, it's all for the good. And how do we have, how can we say those words when you know that Hashem echad? When I begin to realize that everything that's taking place is the complete achdus, the unity of Hashem, then I look at the world, and even when I see things that don't make sense, seem to be a steer, seem to be a contradiction, seem to be a weakness in the way that Hashem is running the world because His power must be limited if He can't overcome this enemy. No, no, no. There's a much larger picture. And the larger picture is, when will the world reach fruition? When is that going to be? All of these are the steps that are going to take us there. And that, that all-encompassing world of Hashem is constantly involved in every little detail of the world. And it's all with achdus, with tremendous, tremendous amount of unity. The more that we connect to that unity of Hashem, so the more our lives and the lives of the people around us and the history of Klal Yisrael, the more that is going to make sense. And then we will see that Koman de Ovid Rahmana, everything that Hashem does is truly Latav Ovid, is all for the good. Thank you. Kasha. Yes. Um, it would seem that Hashem created. Uh, it, it would, I guess, we would say that Hashem created the Yetzirah. I think before man, no. So if He created it before man. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It should be after. I'm sorry. It it should be then, based on the based on that midrash. It should be that Hashem created man, and the Toiv Ma'id. What is very good. Is is the Yetzahara. Even right. yeah. So the Yetzahara is only for man. Yes. No, nothing else. Mm-hmm. Animals don't have that. Animals right. animals animals right. have instinct. So that's why you did it first, that's why you did it after. Okay, and the other question I have is just Ron Carl. Yeah. He only lived till age thirty nine. Yes. So how was he uh, how did he know Kabbalah? He was a super genius. He was, they say that he was like a neshama from a previous generation, and he was able to learn so much from his, his very beginnings of being able to think and to speak and to read, that by a young age already he had already mastered all of Torah, all the Torah, and he began to delve into Kabbalah at a very young age, which is why he was... Um, he was a, mystery, a bit of a mystery man in his generation because the, 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 the leading rabbis of the generation were very nervous that you had such a young man that was pushing forth the ideas of Kabbalah, of, of mysticism, and they had just had the Shabtai Tzvi uh, debacle over there where a person got up and claimed to be the Mashiach. They were very nervous that the Ramchal was going to turn into the same thing. And he was really outcast as a result of that. And he was always, for many years, on a run for his life to different places in Europe until finally he went to Eretz Israel, settled down in Akko. And there in Akko, he died of some, some kind of a disease that he, that he contracted. After he passed away, all of the G'dayle Yisrael, the leaders of the generation, they realized how foolish they were of what an enormous Torah giant this man was. And they found all of his manuscripts and they began publishing it so that we will have them today.